Good morning. Good morning. Woo! You ready to have a great time praising Jesus? There's a there's a, a lot of people here, a lot of people online. Some people felt the need to stay away, and guess what? That's okay, isn't it? And so whether you're here or you're there, we're together. And that's the most important thing. Would you just go to the Lord with me in prayer? Father, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you that what the enemy meant for harm, you're going to flip it around for good. God, we thank you that the church of Jesus Christ cannot be stopped by any force of the enemy. God, we praise you today. God, as we focus on your word and on your will for our lives today, God, it is very clear you have a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. God, today, speak to our hearts. Father, we honor you, we worship you, we adore you. We love you, Jesus. God, we pray for those that are sick and couldn't be here. Lord, that you would heal them. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God, our healer. Lord, for those that maybe slept in, I pray, God, that you would just encourage their spirit today. Father, wherever we're at in life, you care about us. Your word is clear. You care about every detail of our lives. And for that, we're grateful. Now, God, today be the center of this service. May your word be proclaimed, received, and understood. Father, we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? possible
can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you. Blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Him, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. When everything appears to be chaotic, Father, you are always making a way. You are always making a way. And there is none like you, Father God, none but you who could bring us the peace that we need, Father God, to know, to understand that you have everything under control. Times like this, we need to draw together, Father, and just praise and worship your holy name, believing in the power of prayer. For there is power in the name of Jesus. You are a way maker, Father. You keep all your promises. Word says where two or three are gathered, Lord, your presence is there, Father, and we are gathered here today to worship you, to exalt your holy name, for you are worthy, worthy to be praised. And there is none like you, Lord. So in Jesus' name, we pray, Father. We pray for your protection, for your guard upon our lives, Father God. You are the truth, the way, and the life. We are here to worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. time church you are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you yes Lord I worship you all together now. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Make it louder, church. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it one more time. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yeah. We praise you, Lord. It is who you are. That is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you, yes, Lord. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives over.
don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't work it, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. That is who you are. That is who you are, Lord. We make a miracle worker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Man, my soul is full, so full of the Lord right now. You say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise His holy name. Father, we give you honor and glory and praise. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are good, God. Father, you're the God of miracles, the God of promises. And Lord, your promises go on forever and ever and ever. Lord, your word says that you're the God that heals all sickness. And God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, the coronavirus would be gone. That cancer would be gone. God, that sickness and disease would be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would do miracles through this. Lord, that you would do what Genesis 50, 20 says. You would turn what the enemy meant to harm us for good. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for this day. It's in your holy, precious, mighty, and beautiful name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn, look at your neighbor, wave, smile, and take a seat. Man, God is good, isn't he? All the time, all the time. Well, good morning. So grateful to worship with you in person and on live stream. There's many people watching around the globe right now. And, and you know, the Internet kind of changes things, doesn't it? Yeah. Kind of gives us some leverage. You don't necessarily have to be in the building to gather together. And isn't technology cool? It's going to continue to evolve and, and we'll be involved and we'll use it for the glory of God and to build the kingdom of Jesus on earth. Well, uh, here's the deal. If you are watching on live stream, feel free to interact and chat. And if you're sitting here, I'm sorry, not too much chatting going on, all right? You can elbow your neighbor. I think that's still allowed, but, you know, just uh, uh, try to keep the chatter down so I can collect my thoughts. Now the people that are here are like, we should have stayed home, right? No doubt you've heard about 
COVID-19, a.k.a. the coronavirus, and so many that faithfully attend Crossroads. They may be at home watching this as well. I've received a number of messages from people that are doing that. Perhaps they fall into the high risk or they just don't want to be in public. Or maybe, just maybe, you slept in. Everybody say sin. No, just kidding. Don't say that, all right? It's okay. Life happens. And one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible, and I know I have thousands of them, is this. Hebrews 10, 25. It says, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Now something the Lord is doing in my spirit is allowing me to see greater things here. Everybody say greater things. Because I realize that the church is morphing and changing and, and, and it's no longer what we've known it to be. It's no longer just a physical collection of people coming together, but it's those people being uh, uh, out amongst everyone, right? And, and of course, it's better being in a room where Gordon's on the drums, isn't it? I mean, that if you haven't seen that in person, it's worth coming to Florida just to see that. Right. And being together physically is awesome when we can do it. And we have tea and some people enjoy sweet tea. I don't happen to be that person, but most people do. And, and it's just it's just kind of cool to gather together, isn't it? You're encouraged by each other and, and it goes beyond just what I do on Sundays. But I also want to tell you this. If you feel bad because you can't be here in person and you're watching online, uh, perhaps you fall into the high risk or you struggle with social anxiety. That's a really real thing. A really real thing. It, it impacts people. Or you just don't want to be in public right now. That's okay. It's all right. We're okay with that, aren't we, Crossroads? Be freed from tradition and religion that, 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 or whatever it is that says this is how church is done and this is what the church is supposed to be. See, I believe we live in, live in a great time of opportunity. That the good news of Jesus Christ will be proclaimed to the world. And please, 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 please know this from my heart that God's love is not reserved for the people who show up on Sunday mornings and fill the seats of the sanctuary. But that God loves everyone. Amen? We're kicking off this series this morning entitled The Promised Land. And how many of you know that God's word is full of promises? And his promises are for us today as much as they were to the people of ancient times. And God's promises are not like people's promises. Amen? That's right. Preach, preacher! I don't like anybody calling me preacher unless it's me, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Just kidding. But you can take God at his word. If he said it, he means it. But sometimes people, they may let us down. They may back out of their promises. They may not do what they said they're going to do. In fact, that, that, that leads me right into my question for you this morning, which is this. Have you ever... Has anyone ever broken a promise that they made to you? Of course, right? Like if you're breathing, hello, Ben, if I, I'm breathing, that means somebody's broken a promise. Because we don't always control the circumstances around us, the things that happen to us. Plans change, right? I mean, plans change. We've all been there before. And, and so sometimes do people's promises. They change too. And I want to push pause here for a second. I want to drill into this thought that this is something I hold near and dear to my heart, that as Christ followers, we should be people of our promises. We should be people of integrity, understanding that sometimes things happen, sometimes things come up, but that's not the general thing that happens. That's the exception to the rule, which is we do what we say we're going to do. Because as Christ followers, we should always honor our word and do what we promise. So do the people in our lives know that we follow Jesus simply because we are people of integrity? We're people that do what we say we're going to do. Do they know that you mean it when you say something? Can they take it to the bank? When they say, I'll be here, they mean it. That's the way Christians should be. And that's the way it should be for us. 
But even still, things happen, right? Things happen. But not with God. See, no matter what's going on in the world, God always delivers on his promises. That's today's big idea. God always delivers on his promises. There is no change of plans for God. There is, in fact, God never changes. His word never changes. And his promise never changes. And there's one promise for this series, the promised land, that we're going we're gonna to focus on over the next three weeks. It's near the beginning of the Bible. In fact, it's the very first book in the Bible. It's the book of Genesis. We learn the promise that, that God made to a nation he hadn't even established yet. To a nation he hadn't even established yet. And here it is, Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you, and I will make it a great nation. Leave. It seems like Abram, who would later, later be called or known by the name Abraham, was in a pretty comfortable spot, wouldn't it? He had what he needed. His, his family had raised him up, had taught him how to do business. But it, to me, it appears that God's saying, Abram, I don't want you to just hang out and follow what everybody else has done. It's not the status quo. It's not being comfortable. It's not knowing what you know and doing what you know. But Abraham, I have something much greater. In fact, Abraham, you're not a follower. You're going to be a leader. See, Abram, you want to relax. You want to take it easy. And enjoy the things that your family's established. But if you follow me, Abraham, you will be blessed beyond your wildest dreams. In fact, Abram, I won't just bless you and your wife, but I'll make a nation out of you. And not just any nation, Abram, but this nation will be my people. So Abram, he takes God's promises to the bank and he leaves what he's known to journey to a place he does not know. And there's going to be times in your life, especially in your faith walk, where you're not going to know what's next, but you can rely on the promises of God, which is he'll never leave you or forsake you, that he has a good plan and a purpose for your life, that he's right there with you. And in fact, he goes before you that he'll fight your battles. See, because God is a promise maker and a promise keeper. He's a promise maker and a promise keeper. We just sang that song, that is who you are. He's the way maker. And when God makes a promise, listen to me, when God makes a promise, it will happen. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what you face. The Israelites came to the Red Sea and, and, and they said, well, there's no way. We're going back to Egypt. And God said, oh, no, you're not. Watch this. Talk about a way maker. So Abraham and Sarah, they get older, and I bet they're wondering, where is this family that he was talking about? Where is this destiny that he was talking about? In fact, check this out. In Genesis 21, 5, Abram was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born. 100 years old? Come on, somebody. They didn't even have pampers back then. My friend, he called me the other day. He's 41. He's going to be 42 in July. And he told me, I'm going to be a father. And we laughed. And then we laughed. And then we laughed. And then I said, dude, better you than me. And then we laughed some more. <laughs> and Abram's like two and a half times that age at this point of his life. And I'm positive that Abraham and Sarah, as they're going through this journey, they're wrestling with their faith. They're saying, God, you said this. You promised this, God. Where is it at? And when he was 100 years old, God delivered. And then Isaac, his son, had a son named Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. One of, uh, uh, and in Genesis 32, 8, Jacob's name is changed to Israel. Uh-oh, anybody recognize that? 
So check this out. Here we are. Abraham has died in chapter 25. And in chapter 32, you see the destiny being fulfilled, the promise being given. Years later, I don't want a dream that doesn't outlive me. How about you? I don't want a destiny that isn't for people after me. I don't want it to be all about me. I want it for generations to come. How about you? The promise that he made was fulfilled in chapter 32. And guess what? It's still happening today. Fast forward 430 years. I understand we're covering a lot of ground here. We're going to come back over the coming weeks and dial in a little bit, little bit closer. But fast forward 430 years since the first promise God has given to Abraham. And the Israelites, through one of Jacob's son by the name of Joseph, are now living in Egypt, and they're being mistreated. In fact, they're treated horribly, and they are slaves. But God's promises are still on them, aren't they? He's still their people. 430 years, and God hasn't forgotten the promise that he made to Abraham. And God speaks to a man named Moses. And this is the conversation that they have in Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Then the Lord told Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh when he feels the force of my strong hand. He will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. And God said to Moses, I am Yahweh, the Lord. I appeared to Aram, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty, but I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. And I reaffirm my covenant with them. Under its terms, I promised to give them the land of Canaan where they were living as foreigners. You can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel who are now slaves to the Egyptians, and I am well aware of my covenant with them. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will free you from your oppression and will rescue you from your slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will calm you as my own, or claim you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from your oppression in Egypt. I will bring you into the land I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those dudes we just read about. I will give it to you as your very own possession. I am the Lord. So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen anymore. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people of Israel leave his country. But Lord, Moses objected, my own people won't listen to me anymore. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen to me? I'm such a clumsy speaker. But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them orders for the Israelites and for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. So what is this? passage teach us it it, it teaches us a lot Uh, there's a lot for us to learn and this morning let's reflect on a few of those thoughts the first one is this is that the answer is in the promise whenever you look at god's promises you can find the answer to what you're going through you have an issue you have a circumstance you have an obstacle look to god's word for the answer and then walk in faith knowing that god will deliver on his promise Because if God truly always delivers on his promise, then the answer is always in his promise. The answers we face in life are in his promises. And the number one place to find those answers is the word of God, the Bible. It's amazing to me how often we have the answer right in front of us, but we just don't open up the book. We don't open up the app. Uh Uh-oh. We go on screen time and we realize we've spent five hours on Facebook, but five seconds on the Bible app. I'm not passing condemnation. I'm just saying if we want to get through life, if we want to experience the blessings of God, we're going to have to get into his word. 
And look at the very first verse in chapter 6. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I, what I will do to Pharaoh because of my mighty hand. He will drive them out of his country. See, he will force them to leave his land. Pharaoh is going to say, Get out of here. You know how bad we've been treating you? We're going to treat you worse if you stick around. So Moses thought he needed to speak well because he said, oh, you got the wrong dude. I'm clumsy. I stutter. You got the wrong person for this job, God. But what Moses didn't realize is it wasn't up to his talents and abilities anyways that God was going to do all of the work for him. He simply had to obey and walk in faith. So often we think that God is going to do something and that it's dependent upon our, our talents, our abilities. Listen to me, God is going to do whatever God wants to do. And if you're willing, he'll use you. And if not, he'll find somebody else. If Moses had said no, God would have found somebody else. If David wasn't, feel, wasn't willing to go down and face a giant, he would have found somebody else. They probably would have been younger and smaller to show that God is more Bigger and powerful. <laughs> he uses the foolish things, right? Abraham was 100 years old before the seed was born. God's saying, listen, I have the answer for you. I'm working on your behalf. Or do you still trust that God has a plan? Do you still believe God even loves you? I'll answer that for you. Yes, God loves you. And yes, he has a plan and a purpose for your life. I want to point out something very cool about the things, uh, the promises that God made Abraham that we can now experience and benefit from. After all, if you are a Christian, you're connected to the promises that God gave his people, are you not? And so as part of that great nation now through Jesus, you have certain benefits to that promise. The first one is this, is that God made himself fully known. In verse 3, check it out. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name Yahweh to them. See, I don't have time to unpack all of this this week or next week or in 10 years. But the name Yahweh is significant. It's God's holiest name. It's powerful, so holy, so powerful that the Israelites would not even say it out loud. They changed the spelling so that they didn't mess it up. It shows his eternal power. It tells us that he always and will always be. It, it, it translates into I am. It's his personal name. It's the name of the one true God. It, it's what's different about our God and any other God that other people serve. He is Yahweh. 
And what God's saying here is, I am no longer a distant God. Rather, I am a personal God that can be known. And it's nice to meet you, Moses. You know how freaked out you are, Moses? I'm going with you. I am Yahweh. I am who I am. In verse 4, we know that God promised them a home. It says, And I am reaffirming my covenant with them under its terms. I promise to give them the land of Canaan where they were living as foreigners. See, sometimes things happen in our life and things get a little bit uncomfortable. And we feel like we've lost a promise. But what God says here is not only am I going to bring you back to the land that you were living in, but now you're not going to be foreigners. You're going to own it. You see that? 430 years later, he says, I'm taking you back to this land and you're going to own it. See, God has a home for us too, but it's not earth. As viruses spread, natural disasters happen, wars rage on, we can, pre- we can press in and trust and rest in the promise that one day Jesus will return and we will spend eternity with him in heaven. And perhaps the most comforting part of this promise is found in verse 5. The truth that God hasn't forgotten his promise and he is paying attention. Verse 5, it says, You can be sure that I have heard the groans of the people of Israel who are now slaves to the Egyptians, and I am well aware of my covenant with them. You're, you're, you're destroyed, distraught, overwhelmed. God has not forgotten about you. The Bible says that he's close to the brokenhearted. It says he, he'll, he'll bind up all of our wounds. He'll renew our strength. He's the God of comfort. Whatever you're going through, God is with you. But here's the temptation. To believe he isn't and that you aren't good enough. And where is the warning in this passage? The the, the warning, it's found in verse 9. Perhaps to me the most profound thing in this whole story is in verse 9 where it says, So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen anymore. They had become too, everybody say it together, discouraged. They'd become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Do you see it right here? Discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. What has you discouraged? What has you depressed? What has you distraught? What has destroyed you? What, is your, what are you raging against in this battle of faith? See, sometimes we allow distractions called circumstances or current events, a.k.a. the coronavirus, to make us believe that God isn't working on our behalf. We can begin to doubt that he has a plan or a purpose in our lives. Or that we can't go on uh, uh, or, that, or we can't let go of what we've been through. We can't let go of where we've come from. It would be like Abraham saying, I want to go back to the family, family business. It would be like Moses saying, I want to go back to the wilderness and just tend sheep. So you've got to forget where you've been to get to where God wants to take you. Don't allow your past experiences or your current circumstances to to keep you from believing God is working. If you can't move past what you've been through, you can never move into the promised land. I've heard this said, and I'm sure many of you have, the greatest challenge wasn't getting the Israelites out of Egypt, it was getting Egypt out of the Israelites. So what does this mean for us? There's a few things that we can dive into and, and, and talk about. The first one is this, God cares for his children. God cares for his children. John 1, 12. But to all who believe in him and have accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. To all who have said, listen, I've messed up. I've sinned. I confess my sins to you, Jesus. I make you the Lord and the leader of my life. You become a child of God. And God cares about his children. In fact, God cares about everyone. The second thing here is that God has given us everything we need to defeat whatever we face. 
1 John 4, 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. You hear that? Listen, you confess him Lord and Savior of your life. He forgives you the sin. He moves in, and now you have overcoming power. It doesn't matter what I face. Yahweh is in me. The God that parted the Red Sea, the God that slayed the giant, the God that when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, he calmed the lions down. That same God lives in you and he lives in me. But you want to doubt whether you can talk good enough? You want to doubt, you, you want to doubt your own talent, skills, and abilities? We're not good enough. Get over yourself. I told you time and time again that I failed second grade, that people told me my whole life, you're not going to amount to much. You're not really a leader, but God. See, God changes things, doesn't he? God changes things, Jose. Romans 8, 31 to 39, we're almost done. It says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us standing with himself. Who then can condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Who's keeping you safe? Who's keeping you healthy? Who has his hand on you at all times? God, because Jesus is pleading on your behalf. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? Or are we persecuted? Or are perse Despite everything you're going through, through the emotions, the pain, the depression, the discouragement, through it all. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Jesus loves you. And since God always delivers on his promises, we know that nothing can separate us from his love. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears, neither the coronavirus for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. I'm not, listen, I'm not like, I'm not belittling what's going on with this virus. I think it's a thing. I think there's a sickness going around. I think you need to use wisdom. I think you need to clean your hands. I think you need to respect cultural boundaries. You don't need to be going around and hugging everybody and slobbering all over them. I mean, that, right? But you need to not walk in fear. The Bible says, even when I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil. It says, when God's people call on him and pray to him, that he will hear their prayers and he'll heal their land. Father, right now we pray together, believing for a cure for this virus. God, we pray that you would turn this whole situation around for your good. Use it for your good. That people would come to know you. They would know that you love them no matter what. No matter who they are, what they've done, what they're doing. You love them. Father, we believe this in your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So since God always delivers on his promises, since he always delivers on his promises, then we know that we can know him. Since God always delivers on his promises, we know that he's prepared a home for you. Jesus says, I go away, a, a way to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, if I didn't have a ticket for you to get there, 
If I didn't have a way for you to get to where I'm at, I would have told you, give up, forget about it, quit. No, he said, hold on to your faith. And when he left, he said this, he said, go into all the world and teach them about me. Baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's plenty of room in his father's house. He's been building for over 2,000 years. If he built this planet in seven days, six days, and a day of rest, can you imagine what it looks like after 2,000 years? See, since God always delivers on his promises, we know that he has never and will never forget about you no matter where you're at or what you're going. No matter what you face, he's with you. We serve a God that delivers on his promises. Whatever we face in the coming days, in the coming week, we got to trust that God's in control. And in closing, I want to leave you today understanding the same promise God made to Abraham is available to his children today. Confess your sins, ask him to be the leader of your life, and this will be true for your life. Exodus 6, verse 6. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, I will free you from your oppression. Whatever has you captive, whatever addictions, whatever problems you face, God will deliver you. And I will rescue you from the slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people, and I will be your God. Amen? Let's pray. If you're here today, and you need to make sure that you're right with God, all you have to do is simply ask Him to forgive you of anything you've ever done that's against His Word. If that's you, and you're here today, would you slip your hands up? And put them right back down, up and down. I see hands going around. Online, same thing. Same thing. We're going to pray, and just re- Repeat after me and mean it in your heart. The Bible says he's faithful and will forgive you of all unrighteousness. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. That means I've done things I shouldn't have done. And today I ask you to forgive me of that. To come into my heart. To lead my life. To be my Lord and my Savior. I thank you, Jesus, that today I can move into the promised land. I look forward to spending eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Some uh, next steps, practical ways to apply this message to your life. The first one is this. Reflect, have I allowed my past to discourage me from receiving God's future? This is a very real deal. The second one, pray and ask the Lord to show up and show off. You can keep playing, man. Give me some of that Jesus stuff. <laughs> this, is, this is the awkward time of the service, you know? Action, walk with peace. Walk with peace. Walk with peace. The Lord has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. I'm walking in peace, knowing God will answer you. Amen? Amen. Today, what we're going to do is a little different. When you leave, you're going to drop your communication cards and your offering in the buckets that are on the table. And if you're online and you want to give, you can go to www.crossroadsap.com and you scroll down to the Give Online button, click that, and uh, donate your million dollars. All right. God is good, isn't he? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing a song. And I want you to press in. We we still have some time, so press in and worship Jesus, and then we'll be dismissed on Chris's prayer. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Make him hear you in the internet world. Are you blessed?
that work, do you? Your deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. my mother's womb you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer Father, we come before your presence, Lord, just thanking you for this beautiful day that you have made. There is no one like you, Lord, and we are just so grateful that you love us the way that you do. We praise you, Lord. We pray as everyone begins to exit this building, Lord, we understand that we do not exit your presence, that you are constantly watching out over us, Father God. Your word says, draw near to me, and I am faithful to draw near to you. Father, let us continue coming together every day. You and me, Father, you and me, Lord. Just say it, church, you and me, Jesus. You and me, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for this beautiful day. In Jesus' name we pray, hallelujah.
I am a child of God. 